Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Create a Survival Horror Game in Unity, and welcome to episode 41. This tutorial we are going to focus on saving and loading our game. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel on video game development, because there's always loads to see, loads to learn, and loads to do. With that in mind, let's get to work. So saving and loading, as I explained last tutorial, um, is most commonly found in autosave, and that is the method that we're gonna utilize here. And obviously different ways can be done if you want to modify versions of the script that we're going to create. So as I said, what I want to do is I want to get to a point where we get to say the first level after the cutscene, the initial cutscene, and it saves. So when we load, we can actually start there. So what I am going to do is bring our first person controller back to its original position in here. And that is going to be where we would uh, load the game if we were loading from here. So about there seems about right. So everything is now set in place. So let's head back to our original scene. The very first one we created which is the main uh, scene that we go into and this is the room we start in so i'm going to go to scripts and i'm going to create a new folder and let's call this folder saving mech and mech is just sh uh, short for mechanics <clears throat> now if we go to file and build settings, you remember we have all of these in here and they reference different things. Now, the best way of doing this is when we first come into a scene, we need to save something somewhere which we can always reference even when the game is closed to remember where we were, which scene we were in. And the best way of doing that is called player preps. So what we will do is let's right click, create, and let's have a new C-sharp script. And this will be an auto save. So I'm going to call it auto um, zero one. So this is going to be uh, the first auto save. Now, logically, you could have the same script over and over if you want to. By all means, it's not going to make too much of a difference. These scripts are going to be that small that it really doesn't matter too much. All we're doing at this point is getting rid of void update and getting rid of the annotations. So this script is going to save our game. And all we do is we say player prefs dot set int. And I'm gonna set this integer as uh, an actual number, but that number doesn't necessarily have to reflect the scene number. So for example, I could set this as 52 and then we would end up creating um, a script which would basically interpret 52 as scene one. But realistically, we don't really want to do that. Best way to do it is actually reference that integer to the true scene number. So for example, scene one where this script will only exist is scene number two. So scene one is actually scene two. I know it sounds ridiculous and crazy, but the name of the scene that we're in, scene one, is actually scene two of the build. So we can use that to our advantage. So set int, and we can call this anything we want. So in brackets, the name of the actual player pref you want to create. And basically what this is, is like an external variable. So a variable that Unity will remember even when it has been closed down. So let's call this auto save and comma and then the number we want to place into that variable or player pref you know what i mean and we'll do number two there close bracket semicolon and save that's all there is to that so if we place that script in this scene that player pref will remember scene number two so let's go to in fact let's create a new object and let's name this as auto save and then we'll have auto 01 on there and save the scene now i'm not going to play test this just yet 
simply because we need to also account for the fact that uh, scene zero is a, a new game as it were. Um, if I go to the menu, I'll show you what I mean exactly. So main menu, we have new game and load game. So we are going to end up creating a script which when we're here, if it detects that the autosave is zero, we won't be able to load the game. We will only be able to click new game. And obviously when we click new game, that all starts the sequence again. So for now, we're happy with what that is. Next, let's go to our second scene. So let's go to scene 002. And in here, we need to create the autosave for this scene. So just hold control, press D, duplicate, change it to auto2, and set the integer for the same one, the same player pref, as whatever scene number this is. So build settings, scene two is number five. Obviously, you'll know your game a lot more than other people. And by the time you start creating, you know, scene three, four, five, six, the numbers will probably end up being sequential. The only reason they're not right now is because we have the various scenes in between. So let's save that. And let's add that auto save object. So game object, create empty, auto save, and drag and drop auto zero two onto there and save. So I'm happy with the fact that these two scenes will auto save now. It'll remember where we are. So let's create the script which will allow us to actually load the game itself. So right click, create C sharp script. Um, we'll call this load script. If I can actually spell it, I've put script, haven't I? <laughs> I should rename that. So auto, so sorry load script. Let's open that up. Now I'm going to head back into our main menu here because this bit becomes important. So let's go to main menu and I'm going to do this the way I want to. I'm going to have load button as not there and I'm going to have it as well to detect that if we have already started a game load button will occur. So this script is going to be doing a couple of different things, but keep with me, you'll understand how it works. So first things first, let's declare that load button as a variable. So public game object load button semicolon. And next public game object. And we will have, um, let's have load int. So that's gonna be the integer that we load. So what this means is that in void start, we need to say load int is equal to player prefs dot get int rather than set, and in brackets and quotes the name that we have referred to in the auto save files. In this case, it is simply just auto save. So what that will do is it will bring in. I've actually set that as a game object and I should have set that as an int. That's my bad. <laughs> so what will happen here is when the script starts, it will set whatever is in this player pref into here. At that point, what we can do is we can say is if in brackets load int is greater than zero, then we have the load button dot set active true semicolon and i'm going to save that and we're going to try this out now so fingers crossed the load button should not appear when we start the game so let's take that load script and place it on the menu control and we just need to set that variable for load button and let's press play So indeed, load int is still zero. Now, next thing we need to do before we actually test any more of this is we're going to get that load button actually working. And to do that, we need to add in a namespace at the top. This namespace is for the scene management as we've dealt with previously. So using unity engine dot scene management, semicolon. 
Let's get rid of void update because we don't need it. And do you know, actually, now I think about it, now I think about it, let's have a look at our previous main menu function. Because we might be able to actually merge these scripts together rather than have that load script. I think that might actually be a better option, if I'm honest, because then we keep everything together, don't we? Rather than have multiple scripts that do a couple of different things. So while we're at it, let's bring over these variables into main menu function. And let's also bring that start method as well. So rather than have that extra script, we've actually got everything in here. So I'm going to save that load script there and save the main menu function there. Let's remove that load script. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Uh, remove and let's add that load button. Just make sure this still works. Perfect. So what we do now is we create a new uh, method and a new coroutine for loading the game. So let's go public void load game button, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket, and we will have start coroutine and in brackets, it'll be load game start, oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. And I'm going to copy this coroutine for the new game and paste it, but call it load game start. So it functions the same way as our new game button, but instead of actually changing the scene to number four, we are going to change it to whatever is in the integer in autosave, which is currently in load int. So instead of the number four down there, we have load int and save. So all of this now is going to function as a true load and save system. So if we head back into Unity, let's go to our load button. And we just need to set that up. So click plus uh, menu control and change that to load game button and save. So I am fairly confident now that this whole sequence of events should work. Um, there is one thing I probably do need to do ever so slightly on scene one. If I recall, the post processing here is a little bit too much. So I'm going to get rid of that light because it is a bit of a pain and save. Okay, so let's head back to main menu and let's see how this, oh, there's that eye. Let's see how this all looks now. Fingers crossed. So the load button should not appear. It doesn't. So let's go. New game. Now, unfortunately, we are going to have to sit through my uh, terrible voice acting here that we did quite a while ago. But what should happen now is when we get into our next scene, I am going to stop gameplay and I am going to try and load the game from the main menu and we'll see how that forever. goes. I, I do apologize for this awful voice acting, guys. I headed I'm so out sorry. to investigate the haunting sounds in the woods. Those haunting sounds, indeed. You probably skip ahead uh, about I 30 seconds or so if you want to. clearing with a cabin in the distance. As we've seen this before, haven't we? We end up getting close to that cabin and then smash on I the head. I could hear those sounds something. again coming from there. Little did I know that this was only the beginning. It was only the beginning. So, so far, no save has occurred because we are in this cutscene. There's no auto save. But as soon as this ends, right here, we go into the next scene. Oh, and we will I? have generated that auto save. I need now. to get out of here. So, yep, we're in this uh, level. 
So if we press play now, we should see the load game button. And we do. So if we press this, we should be able to go straight into where we've just saved. And we do. Oh, where Perfect. Am I? So let's go I a little bit further here and just make sure it works as intended. So if we were to quit the game now, Looks like we'd start back at the table. beginning of this particular section where we auto-saved. But if we pick up the pistol, and let's sort out this zombie. So if we go through here now, into the next area, we'll generate that second auto-save. So if we stop the game there, press play, load game should still appear, and we should load into that second area. And we do. It should also be noted as well that if we do go new game, we don't actually um, create a new game file until we get to that first area. So if we start a new game, stop it, and then try loading, we will actually load our original save just before we got to that menu. So second area. It's only when you get to the first auto save that you will erase everything. You can change that if you want to, but it might not be worth it just in case. So that is how we can basically create a load and save system. And you can obviously do a couple of things extra to that to make it more intelligent, but you've got the basics there. That's all you're really going to need. You can work with those basics and build a really good saving and loading system. So the next tutorial, guys, we are going to create a credit scene. Um, we will create probably some links on the main menu and we will look at actually building the product and um, we'll probably talk about where we can go from here. So the next tutorial will be the last of this series because at this point you've learned enough to just go forward and reference a couple of different things from previous tutorials and you'll be able to create a full survival horror game with everything you've learned until the end of next tutorial. So until that next tutorial guys, thank you very much for watching.